Iranian hypersonic missile, U.S. risks losing the Middle East. The world is changing rapidly. More precisely, it's changing at hypersonic speed. The Iranian IRNA news agency statement that the country has developed a hypersonic missile is another confirmation of this. Literally, the domestically developed Fatah hypersonic missile, the latest achievement of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, was unveiled Tuesday morning, June 6th, in the presence of President Ebrahim Raisi. It further specifies that the successful test was carried out on May 29th. Consequently, the country, which has been under Western sanctions for 44 years, has managed to develop a weapon that only Russia and China have so far. In the USA, after unsuccessful tests on March 13th of the AGM-183 ARRW missile, it was announced that hypersonic missiles will not appear until 2027. And this video will tell what is currently known about the Iranian hypersonic missile and how it will change the geopolitical balance of power in the world. Spoiler alert! It'll change a lot. First of all, what's known about this Iranian weapon? So far, the only sources of information are the Iranian media, so their reports should be treated with some skepticism, but it would be a gross mistake not to believe them completely. To date, we know that the missile Fatah, which is translated from Farsi as winner, has a range of 1,400 kilometers, a speed of 12 to 13 Mach, can maneuver in the atmosphere and outside the atmosphere and pass through all anti-missile defense systems. That's according to the data. Fata flies even faster than the famous Russian Dagger, but falls short in range. The Dagger has a range of 2,000 kilometers, but the Iranian missile is launched from the ground whereas the Russian missile needs a MiG-31 fighter interceptor. It's also known that Fata has an upper stage with a solid propellant engine with a controlled thrust vector and a controlled unit is fitted with aerodynamic rudders that enable it to change its flight path. The body of the missile uses carbon fibers that effectively absorb radar waves and reduce the infrared radiation of the rocket engine, that is, make the Fatah less noticeable. Of course, it's hard to believe that Iran was able to develop such a unique weapon on its own. 44 years of sanctions couldn't help but have an impact. Surely the Persians had help, but by whom? The most likely candidate is Russia. And judging by the fact that immediately after this news, the US authorities imposed sanctions on China and Hong Kong for selling important components for missiles to Iran, the Chinese were involved in the creation of the Fatah. Why do Russia and China need such close military technical cooperation with Iran? To answer this question, we need to analyze the key characteristics of the Fatah. Its speed and range. Hypersonic speed has already clearly demonstrated its capabilities in Russia's conflict with Ukraine. Several Russian Kenzals have hit protected targets, including a former Soviet nuclear warhead storage facility in the Carpathian Mountains. They also damaged the U.S. Patriot anti-missile system. At least all the 32 missiles of this system didn't hit the dagger, but it damaged several launchers. That is, no Western missile defense system can destroy hypersonic missiles yet. This is logical. After all, to make a system capable of shooting down hypersonic missiles, it's first necessary to make these missiles themselves to understand how to shoot them down. Now about the range. The range of the Iranian hypersonic missile is 1,400 kilometers. And what countries are located in this range around Iran? This circle includes Saudi Arabia and Israel. Of course, Turkmenistan and Georgia, but it seems that Iranians have no claims to these countries. The Saudis also recently reconciled with the Iranians with the active participation of Russia and China in this process which means that Iran has hardly aimed its new missiles at the oil facilities of Saudi Arabia. We're left with essentially only one option as to why Iran needs hypersonics, Israel, which has built a powerful, deeply echeloned missile defense. And it's not the well-known Iron Dome designed to intercept the non-fast Qasem missiles that Arab terrorists build in their garages. Israel also has much stronger missile defense systems arranged in three defense echelons. The first, the longest echelon of missile interception is the Hez complex, equipped with Arrow 3 missiles with a range of up to 1,250 kilometers. The second echelon is the same Hez system as the Arrow 2 missile with a range of up to 100 kilometers. And finally, the third echelon is a complex David Sling, or as it's called, Magic Wand. Its stunner missiles operate at a range of 70 to 300 kilometers. Is that enough to level out the Iranian threat? No. 
Yes, the Israeli missiles were designed to intercept targets up to 4.5 kilometers per second, and 13 Mach, which Fatah develops, is exactly 4.5 kilometers a second. But the Iranian missile also maneuvers. This is not an ordinary ballistic target flying on a predictable trajectory. So, as of today, Israel has no defense against the new Iranian weapons. What does this give Iran? As we know, that country has long and persistently tried to develop its nuclear weapons, and Israel, understanding whom it could be used on in the first place, actively and resolutely prevents it from doing so. Remember how on June 7, 1981, during the famous Operation Opera, eight Israeli F-16s destroyed Iran's French-made Osirik nuclear reactor and put a break on Iran's nuclear program for decades? But the Iranians have learned their lessons. Iran's air defense now consists of Russian S-300 PMU-2 surface-to-air missile systems, as well as their new Bavar-373, Talish, Kordad, and Mursad-16 systems. Plus, Russia has supplied Iran with its Su-35 fighters. So now it's much harder to get to its nuclear facilities. But if Israel doubts that Iran is at the finish line of building a nuclear bomb, it'll no doubt launch another attack. The stakes are too high. But now there's a risk that not only will the Israelis not be able to hit targets in Iranian territory, but they'll also be guaranteed a retaliatory strike with hypersonic missiles that will destroy their missile defenses. And then ordinary Iranian missiles, of which Iran has even too many, will fly into Israel. They are Faith 110 with a range up to 500 kilometers, Zulafikar up to 700 kilometers, Dezful up to 1,000 kilometers, Koramshar 4 with a range of up to 2,000 kilometers and a warhead of 1,500 kilograms. Moreover, according to Amir Ali Hazi Zada, commander of the Iranian Aerospace Forces, one such missile can hit up to 80 targets simultaneously. This missile was tested almost simultaneously with the Fatah. This hypersonic missile was tested on May 29th and Koramshar 4 on May 25th. In other words, the emergence of an atomic Iranian bomb is becoming more and more real. If the Iranians get their hands on it, it will fundamentally change the situation in the Middle East. Israel will no longer be a U.S. outpost in the region because it'll think more about its security than helping U.S. policy. Already now, Israel's refusal to supply weapons to Ukraine is explained by its fear of spoiling relations with Russia, which could easily further strengthen Iran and pit it against Israel. Saudi Arabia will get even closer to China and Russia as allies of Iran, that is, the U.S. could almost entirely lose its influence in the Middle East. In short, things are far from rosy for the West, and for the entire human civilization as a whole, Iran's hypersonic and then nuclear weapons are another big step toward World War III. There's only one thing that makes us happy. Many experts doubt that the Fatah has the declared characteristics. The Israeli military expert David Sharp said that the possibility of achieving 13 to 15 Mach is extremely doubtful. The Fatah has a classic warhead, albeit a separatable one, which can correct its trajectory. But this is not the planning unit that the US and Russia are trying to develop. It was doubted that the Fatah could even reach its declared speed in Russia. Other experts wonder whether the Iranian hypersonic missile has already been developed. After all, it's one thing to have a single test, albeit a successful one, and it's quite another thing to have a well-developed design that can be mass-produced and deployed. But in any case, the understanding is getting clear that the next five to ten years will be the years of the global transformation of the world, as predicted by many philosophers and futurists. And God grants that after this transformation, humanity will go on and not die in the radioactive ashes of war. Do you think Iranian hypersonic weapons threaten our civilization, or are we making it worse? Write about it in your comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up as a thank you for our work. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. There will be more interesting videos about modern weapons.